Holy cow, today we got for you, bam, 1982, a 40 year old car. This car has outlasted so many others. What was that? Oh my eye. Because of that, we're gonna make it better by upgrading some of the existing platform on it that is outdated, to be polite, and we're gonna make it perform better. That means it's gonna run cleaner, it's gonna be faster. It's gonna run stronger. It's gonna last longer. It's gonna replace another four cars in its lifetime. Because it's already done the duty of like four, right? I mean, how long does an average car last nowadays? I don't even know. Three, four years? 100,000 miles, maybe? Yeah, this isn't a disposable car. So because of that, we're helping save the resources of the planet. Resources like plastic, plastic, rubber, rubber, steel, aluminum, copper, circuit boards. Yeah, this thing came with the ignition ECU, believe it or not. Copper, aluminum, plastic, glass. Man, how you figure saving that old car is going to save all your resources, man? Well, that's pretty obvious. I would be willing to say that within the lifetime that this family has owned this car, it's probably replaced four so far. And because of that fact, he now wants to upgrade it, and he's been driving it. Half busted for I don't know how long. This head right here has got a crack between the two valves. I don't know if I ever showed that to you. Did I show you that? Got a crack in between the two valves. So it was always down on power. So it wasn't even running up to stock specs. So now this thing's going to really part his hair. When he gets it back, it's going to be so much fun. And it's in such great condition, guys. It really is. Through and through. It really is. 1982, okay? 1982. Now, it's been sitting out in front of my house for about a year because I've been doing all kinds of stuff, getting the motor ready and everything else because I really wanted to get this car ready for him. I had no idea it was going to take me this long, but here we are. Let's get it. Went through the motor, did all the gaskets, did a bunch of videos about it. We'll include them in the description below. How we got this far and put the motor back in, the clutch we used. Uh, and all the things we checked out. We did a manifold comparison on the exhaust side. We did a head gasket and timing belt. And this is a Frankenstein. b 230 ft head and a B21F block pistons, rods, crank. With a turbo, the goal was the 85. Primarily just run on the 85. And uh, it's pretty gnarly. We're going to upgrade the factory platform just a little bit because it's outdated to so something that will make the car more efficient, more economical, more environmentally friendly by saving resources like I mentioned before and running cleaner than it was with a mechanical fuel injection on it with little to no learning curve to change the fuel curve and the ignition curve to run this car cleaner. We are strategically upgrading a stock platform to make it last longer, to save the Earth's resources and make this car last another 40 years so this family doesn't have to buy another four cars. Where you is it? Uh, not there. No. Aha! I see your face! Oh, I see your butt. Don't nobody else look for it. I found it. Get, get your, get in there. Get, go to your home. Yeah. Last week, we did this video. Ah, yeah. Starter bolts. 
Let's try to not. This sucks. Yeah. But it's okay. But this is what Ooh. it is. This is what I figured out. Ah! ah frick. I had to figure out. I became a master of my mind. There it is, right there. People, when you're afraid of something, you have to master it. That's how you start to overcome it. So what I realized. I'm just glad I piled everything, everything in this drawer right here. Everybody. Get the um. This is what happens. The mind tells you, let's go. Let's take a little shot. Let's get some food. This is not. I right. bet y'all want to know what I'm listening to, right? If you cannot answer all right. questions at that all moment. All right. Because your mind is going to start giving you all these questions. All these questions. After school, and if man. You can't answer them. You're going to quit. What I realized when I was going through Bud's Ranger School, all this sort of 100 mile race, 200 mile races, pull up records, my mind would come. Hey, Huskers. That's what that is. We got our nut back. Yeah, boy. Loose nut on the magnet. It's always important to put your cover back on your magnet. So it doesn't get stagnant. Ow! Alright, I already buttoned up the starter and the transmission bolts all the way around, bell housing bolts all the way around. What? You wanted to see how to do that? Oh, okay. Well, I can show you real quick. It's not a big deal. I'll show you the tools I used, even. Primarily, a flexible 19 millimeter will save your life here because you could get in here at these weird angles and flop that end over and just ratchet away where it kills time with an open end wrench and you're barely within enough room to do it. It's just a terrible deal. Okay? The only place I really use this at was the bottom bolt down here. You can barely get it on the top bolt here, but down there on the bottom, underneath the car, it's great. So that's the only place I really use that. Primarily, these two are your guys. This is a three quarter inch and also a 19 millimeter. Same size, basically. Now I built a little platform. I don't know, I guess it's about a foot high, maybe eight inches high. So that I can get up here when the car's on a jack stand and I kill myself and deal with these bolts here. And so with the starter, the starter was kind of particular. The bottom was easy because I could just pull the cable off because I'd never really put the cable on. It was just laying in the hole. Pull that cable off for the clutch. And over here, it was pretty easy because you could just take your wrench and lay it up against the head on that nut right there. And then use this guy to go back here and get on it and ratchet it and basically I hold it's a two hand deal I use my left hand to ratchet this and I use my right hand to hold it on the bolt and it works best while this one's just sitting here holding itself so it's pretty interesting deal it's the best way to do it in my experience also with the intake manifold off a lot of people will make the mistake of putting the intake manifold on because it looks so much better with the intake manifold on, and it truly does. But, you know, everything has its time and moment. So right now, this is the easiest way to get all this stuff done. Then we went around the motor and just used our ratchet wrench, flexible ratchet wrench, until we couldn't really get a grip on it anymore, and then used our regular wrench to seize and tighten the bolts, not to seize, to tighten the bolts the rest of the way. Pretty easy deal. And then, as you can see, she is closed up together. So not a big deal there. Nothing really wasted, nothing really missed there. But these tips, man, they're worth their weight in gold. And something else I wanted to tell you all about, really proud of, like, here at Turbo World, we don't have our merch that we push on people. Uh, so we're not really trying to sell anybody anything, really honestly and uh but we like to give we like to give we like to give knowledge and experience to our viewers and subscribers and uh this one right here is just a priceless freebie you know if you got a regular t4 or t3 turbo uh flange gas that i guess it holds the turbo together holds the housings together exhaust housing and compressor housing together if you have those you can use it as a bracket for your 16T turbo, maybe even your 19T, maybe even your K24. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know what the possibilities are. They may be endless. 
there's many different holes there in different settings you can use. You can even drill your own. I mean, the endless possibilities. But man, yeah, that's a freebie right there, you guys. Just for you. Free wastegate manifold bracket. I wonder what they sell for if somebody had to make one. I bet you there's a couple companies out there. Y'all comment in the description down below what they cost from the companies that make them. I'd be interested to know. Turbo World just saved you that much money. What? Oh, look at it. It's so pretty. Dun, dun, dun. What is this spaghetti sauce? That's the factory stuff. We're going to use most of it. This harness is actually pretty new. Somebody's been in here in the past. I think it was David's dad that did a lot of restoring work to this car. And uh, with that, I think he put a new harness in. I, don't, I could be wrong, but it's definitely not a 1982 harness. I can tell you that with 100% certain. Because these harnesses, they like to degrade. You can see where this one got hot and fried. That's that electrical wire we fixed. It was the cool ignition uh, power. That was the ignition power positive we fixed when we first got this car towed to us from San Antonio. It wouldn't start. Well, it'd start, but it wouldn't run. As soon as you let off the starter, man, this thing wouldn't run anymore. But as long as you laid on the starter, the engine would run. And so it was basically the ignition power wire going straight from the starter here. Right? It goes right over to the ignition. The ignition ECU gets its power straight from that starter leg. And so while I was turning the key to start it, it got its power to the ECU. But once I let go of the key, that power wire that was there to branch the gap in the circuit had fried and ground it out and melted completely and just like disintegrated and wasn't connected anymore. So the only time it was getting a connection is when you were turning the key in the start mode. And I gotta tell you this too, cause this is another freebie and I guarantee you there's a good percentage of cars out there in the salvage yard right now Volvos, these old 242s and 244s, and maybe even older, that have the same exact problem, and they were just given up on because people didn't understand what was going on. Uh, and it's as simple as actually one wire being replaced. And I did that, I replaced the wire. So we left the factory wire in the harness just to show you its melted capability. No, actually, that was an accident and laziness. Uh, we just left the wire in there and put a new wire over top of it. So I'm going to be wiring this up, putting it back in its factory positions, figuring out what I need to do and what I don't need to do, and then I'll tell you what our plan is. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Maybe I'll shave later too and get my face on camera. You can always tell when I haven't shaved because my face isn't on camera a lot. I don't know if you notice that on this channel or not. Yeah, I just don't want to shave, man. It's like every second day I have to shave. Ooh. Some baby totems. Baby totems. Baby told you so.